Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India topic is uh, in jaundice where we are going to go, uh, discuss introduction classification causes of each type of uh, jaundice with an emphasis on uh, physiologic uh, jaundice before we go into the details of jaundice it is necessary to know the metabolism of bilirubin in our body as you all know th the lifespan of rbc's is about 120 days after which it undergoes breakdown to release hemoglobin hemoglobin is made up of two parts the prosthetic part heme and the protein part called globin the protein part globin is then recycled in the form of its constituent amino acids and the heme of hemoglobin further undergoes degradation in the reticuloendothelial system of liver cells spleen cells and red bone marrow cells in the reticuloendothelial system hemin is converted to bilirubin by the action of the enzyme microsomal heme oxygenase system so this reaction requires nadph it takes place in the presence of molecular oxygen and this is the only reaction in our body wherein carbon monoxide is released and in this reaction we also see the release of iron in its oxidized state that is ferric state as you all know there are two states of iron one is reduced state or ferrous state and other one is oxidized state or ferric state bilirubin then by the action of the enzyme bilirubin reductase in the presence of nadph gets converted to bilirubin so this bilirubin is supposed to be toxic it is neurotoxic since it is soluble in fat but insoluble in water so because of its solubility in fat it readily crosses the blood brain barrier and therefore it is considered to be neurotoxic from the reticular endothelial system bilirubin is carried to the liver in combination with plasma albumin and then liver processes toxic bilirubin or unconjugated bilirubin by means of three main phases the first phase is uptake of bilirubin the second phase is conjugation of bilirubin and the third phase is release of bilirubin into the intestine so there are three phases the first phase is uptake of bilirubin by the liver parenchymal cells and then the second phase is conjugation of bilirubin in the liver parenchymal cells in the presence of udp glucuronal transferase to convert to get converted into bilirubin diglucuronide the difference between bilirubin and bilirubin diglucuronide is in its solubility bilirubin is water insoluble but is soluble in fat but bilirubin diglucuronide is soluble in water this bilirubin diglucuronide or conjugated form of bilirubin is then excreted into the intestine wherein it is acted upon by the intestinal bacterial flora and gets converted to urobilinogen a considerably good amount of urobilinogen then enters intrahepatic urobilinogen cycle or enterohepatic portal circulation since urobilinogen is water soluble a trace amounts of this urobilinogen is excreted in the urine as urobilinogen significantly good amount of urobilinogen enters intrahepatic urobilinogen cycle and some amount of urobilinogen is also excreted in the feces and it is known as tercobilinogen so as i said there are three phases by which liver converts toxic unconjugated bilirubin which is water sol water insoluble but but is soluble in fat Uh, uh, it converts unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin which is water soluble by means of three phases the first phase is uptake of bilirubin by the liver parenchymal cells second phase is conjugation and the third phase is release into the intestine so this is the reaction which actually takes place in the process of conjugation of unconjugated bilirubin to convert it into bilirubin diglucuronide which is also known as conjugated form of bilirubin so entire process converts indirect water insoluble fat soluble bilirubin to direct bilirubin or 
water soluble bilirubin which is non toxic and which is readily excreted in the urine. So, in the first reaction unconjugated bilirubin is acted upon by the enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase to form bilirubin monoglucuronide with addition of one unit of UDP glucuronic acid and then bilirubin monoglucuronide by the action of the same enzyme that is UDP glucuronyl transferase converts bilirubin monoglucuronide to bilirubin diglucuronide which is also known as conjugated form of bilirubin. This takes place in the with the addition of UDP glucuronic acid. So, in the entire process water insoluble bilirubin is converted to water soluble non toxic bilirubin. Unconjugated bilirubin is also known as indirect form of bilirubin and conjugated bilirubin which is water soluble is also known as direct form of bilirubin. So, this picture depicts the normal metabolism of bilirubin in our body. As I said there are three phases by which liver processes unconjugated bilirubin to make it conjugated form of bilirubin. The first phase is uptake of bilirubin by the liver parenchymal cells. The second phase is conjugation of bilirubin and the third phase is release of conjugated bilirubin into the intestine. So, this green line indicates the release of conjugated form of bilirubin to the intestine. In the intestine it is acted upon by the intestinal bacterial flora and gets converted to urobilinogen which then enters intrahepatic urobilinogen cycle. So, significant form of uh, amount of bilirubin I mean urobilinogen enters intrahepatic urobilinogen cycle and le uh, uh, a little amount of urobilinogen is excreted in the feces in the form of stercobilinogen. Since this urobilinogen is water soluble trace amounts of urobilinogen is excreted in the urine. For this reason the urine of normal healthy person will have trace amounts of urobilinogen in the urine. Now, coming to jaundice, jaundice is also known as icterus and it is defined as the alloys discoloration of skin, sclera and the mucous membrane due to the deposition of bilirubin. The normal range for uh, bilirubin in plasma is unconjugated bilirubin which is also known as indirect form of bilirubin is 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 milligram per deciliter and the normal range for conjugated bilirubin which is also known as direct bilirubin is 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 milligrams per deciliter. The normal plasma level of total bilirubin is less than 1 milligram per deciliter. When the amount of normal plasma bilirubin exceeds 1 milligram per deciliter then the condition is known as jaundice. Now, coming to the classification, jaundice is conveniently classified into three types based on the anatomical site affected. So, there are three types, the first type is prehepatic jaundice which is also known as hemolytic jaundice and biochemically prehepatic type of jaundice is also classified as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Then the second type is hemolytic jaundice which can be classified both as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia or as conjugated hyperbilirubinemia depending upon the phase affected in the liver. So, as I said there are three phases by which the liver metabolizes, uh, metabolizes or which liver handles bilirubin. The first phase is uptake, second phase is conjugation and the third phase is release into the intestine. So, depending upon the site affected in hepatic, jo hepatic jaundice can also be classified into either unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia or as conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. The third type is post hepatic type of jaundice which is also known as obstructive jaundice. Biochemically obstructive jaundice is also classified as conjugated hyperbilirubinemia since in post hepatic type of jaundice or obstructive jaundice in the blood we see elevated levels of conjugated form of bilirubin that is the reason obstructive jaundice or post hepatic type of jaundice is also known as conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Now, coming to the first type that is prehepatic type of jaundice which is also known as hemolytic jaundice. The main cause for prehepatic type of jaundice or hemolytic jaundice is excessive hemolysis of RBCs leading to the release of bilirubin. Because of excessive hemolysis of RBCs lot of bilirubin is released into the bloodstream 
and this form of bilirubin is unconjugated form of bilirubin. For, for this reason, prehepatic type of jaundice or hemolytic jaundice is also known as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. The causes include malaria, incompatible blood transfusion, administration of certain drugs, snake bite and chemical poisoning. So, all these conditions will lead to excessive hemolysis of RBCs. As a result, we see increased levels of unconjugated bilirubin in the bloodstream or plasma. The biochemical findings, as I said, prehepatic type of jaundice or hemolytic jaundice is caused by the excessive hemolysis of RBCs. As a result, increased levels of bilirubin is deposited in the plasma. So, increased levels of bilirubin is also conjugated by the liver parenchymal cells and increased levels of conjugated bilirubin is released into the intestine. As a result, increased amounts of conjugated bilirubin gets converted to urobilinogen and increased amounts of urobilinogen then enters intrahepatic portal circulation or enterohepatic circulation. So, in the, in the urine, we will see increased excretion of urobilinogen in prehepatic type of jaundice. So, these are the biochemical findings. We will see increased unconjugated bilirubin in the blood because of excessive hemolysis of RBCs increase urobilinogen in the urine that is because more amount of bilirubin is being con conjugated and more amount of conjugated bilirubin is being released into the intestine and more amount of this conjugated bilirubin is acted upon by the intestinal bacterial flora and gets converted to urobilinogen. Since urobilinogen is water soluble, more amount of urobilinogen is excreted in the urine. At the same time, significantly good amount of Urobilinogen uh, is also excreted in the feces. Now, coming to the second type of jaundice, which is also called as hemolytic jaundice. So, hemolytic jaundice can be classified both as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia or as conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, depending upon the site affected or depending upon the defect. So, there are three phases by which liver handles bilirubin. The first phase is uptake of bilirubin, the second phase is conjugation of bilirubin and the third phase is release of this conjugated bilirubin into the intestine. The causes for hemolytic jaundice include dysfunction of liver, damage caused to the liver cells due to viral infection, poisons and toxins and cirrhosis. So, as I said, there are three phases. The first phase is uptake of unconjugated bilirubin by the liver parenchymal cells. The second phase is conjugation of bilirubin in the liver parenchymal cells with the UDP glucuronic acid by the action of the enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase and the third phase is release of conjugated bilirubin into the intestine. If the defect lies with the first two steps that is uptake of bilirubin or with conjugation process of bilirubin, then in the bloodstream we will see increased levels of unconjugated bilirubin. So, if the defect lies with the first two phases that is uptake of bilirubin and conjugation of bilirubin, then in the bloodstream or in the plasma, we will see increased levels of unconjugated fraction of bilirubin. And if the defect lies with the third phase that is release of conjugated bilirubin into the intestine, then in the bloodstream or in the plasma, we will see elevated levels of conjugated form of bilirubin. For this reason, Hepatic jaundice can be classified biochemically either as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia or as conjugated hyperbilirubinemia depending upon the defect. So, as you see here, if the defect lies with conjugate, uh, conjugation and uptake of bilirubin, then it is classified as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia since in the plasma we see elevated levels of unconjugated bilirubin. And if the defect lies with the third phase that is release of conjugated bilirubin into the intestine, then in the plasma we will see elevated levels of conjugated bilirubin in the blood. So, in hepatic type of jaundice, we will also see increased levels of alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase. So, these are the liver enzymes which are specific to liver. ALT is liver specific and in any liver damage, we will see elevated levels of ALT or alanine transaminase in the plasma. 
In the faces, we will see clay colored due to the absence of stercobilinogen. That is, if the defect lies with the third phase, that is release of conjugated bilirubin into the intestine, then there won't be any formation of urobilinogen and there won't be any formation of stercobilinogen in the faces in the intestine and as a result we will see clay colored faces due to the absence of stercobilinogen urine may be yellow due to the presence of conjugated form of bilirubin when the release of conjugated bilirubin into the intestine gets affected the conjugated bilirubin gets regurgitated and it re-enters into the plasma and as a result it is excreted in the urine since conjugated bilirubin is water soluble. So, as you see here if the defect lies with the first two phase that is first phase is uptake of bilirubin and second phase is conjugation of bilirubin then in the blood you will see unconjugated bilirubin in the uh, elevated levels of unconjugated bilirubin. Since un unconjugated bilirubin is water insoluble, it is not excreted in the urine. If the defect lies with the third phase that is release of conjugated bilirubin into the intestine, then due to regurgitation, conjugated form of bilirubin el is elevated in the plasma and since conjugated form of bilirubin is water soluble, it is excreted in the urine. And if the defect in release of conjugated bilirubin to into the intestine is only partial, then you may also see little amount of urobilinogen formation and little amount of excretion of stercobilinogen in the faces. The third type of jaundice is post hepatic jaundice, which is also known as obstructive jaundice. So, it is as the name indicates, obstructive jaundice is caused due to obstruction in the bile duct due to the presence of gallstone or due to the tumor of head of pancreas. So, as you see here there is a block and in post hepatic type of jaundice or obstructive jaundice all the three phases of liver are normal. The first phase uptake of bilirubin is normal, the second phase conjugation of bilirubin is also normal and the third phase release of conjugation into the common bile duct is also normal. But the conjugated form of bilirubin is not entering into the intestine due to the block and this block could be due to the formation of gallstone or could be due to the cancer of head of pancreas. So, as you see here the head of pancreas is lodged here and because of inflammation the conjugated form of bilirubin is not excreted into the intestine. So, this conjugated form of bilirubin then gets regurgitated and it re-enters into the pl bloodstream or plasma. Since conjugated form of bilirubin is water soluble, it is conveniently excreted in the urine. And because of this block, the conjugated bilirubin is not secreted or released into the intestine and as a result, we see absence of urobilinogen, absence of stercobilinogen and absence of intrahepatic urobilinogen cycle. Now, coming to the findings, increased conjugated bilirubin in blood and urine is due to regurgitation. We also see increased levels of alkaline phosphatase enzyme in post hepatic type of jaundice or obstructive jaundice. This is because alkaline phosphatase enzyme is located in the bile duct and due to the damaged bile duct these alkaline phosphatase enzymes are released into the plasma. As a result we see elevated levels of alkaline phosphatase enzyme in the plasma. The urine is dark colored due to the presence of conjugated bilirubin and as we know conjugated bilirubin is water soluble and it is excreted in the urine. So, in obstructive jaundice, urine will be dark yellow colored. The faces is clay colored due to the excess fat excretion and absence of stercobilinogen. Now, there is a reason why a person with uh, obstructive type of jaundice will excrete excess fat in the feces. So, this is because for the absorption digestion of fat we need bile salts and because of the block or because of the obstruction of common bile duct the bile salts are not excreted into the intestine. As a result feces will have more of un un uh, in di uh, undigested fats. So, in uh, obstructive type of jaundice we will also see prolonged 
blood coagulation time and this is because of the absence of bile salts and vitamin K is a fat soluble vitamin which requires bile the, which, which requires the presence of bile salts for its absorption. So, due to the block or due to the obstruction of bile flow the bile salts are not excreted secreted into the intestine as a result it affects the absorption of vitamin K from the intestine. So, this leads to prolonged blood coagulation time. Vitamin K is required for the process of blood, blood, coagulation, blood coagulation since it helps in the gamma carboxylation of specific glutamic residues of prothrombin which is a clotting factor and because of this because of this gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid of prothrombin the prothrombin gets converted to thrombin. Impaired digestion and absorption of fat causes excess fat excretion in the feces. Now, coming to the classification of jaundice, biochemically there are two types of jaundice, one is unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia and the second type is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. We have neonatal jaundice which is also known as carnicterus which is a physiological jaundice which is seen in newborns due to impaired, impaired uh, immature hepatic system. So, neonatal jaundice or carnicterus is seen in newborns because of immature hepatic system. <coughs> so, increased hemolysis with immature hepatic system for uptake conjugation and excretion of bilirubin and also it is characterized by reduced activity of UDP glucuronyl transferase enzyme. So, increased unconjugated bilirubin in the plasma then crosses the blood brain barrier because of its solubility. Unconjugated bilirubin as we know it is insoluble in water, but it is soluble in fat. Since it is soluble in fat, it readily crosses the blood brain barrier and therefore, it causes uh, harmful to the harm to the neuro, neuro, neural cells. So, this uh, condition is known as carnicterus. Neonatal jaundice is treated with phototherapy, which involves the photoisomerization of toxic unconjugated bilirubin to form non-toxic lumirubin, which is then excreted in the urine. The next type of genetic disorder is Gilbert's disease, which is characterized by defective uptake of bilirubin by the liver parenchymal cells. So, it is also characterized by reduced conjugation and secretion. The next type of autosomal recessive disorder in which we see increased levels of unconjugated bilirubin is krigler najjar syndrome type 1. In this disorder, it is characterized by inherited absence of the enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase, which adds UDP 2 units of UDP glucuronic acid to form to convert your unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin. So, unconjugated bilirubin is water soluble and conjugated bilirubin is un, I am sorry, unconjugated bilirubin is water insoluble and the conjugated bilirubin is water soluble. So, in Kligler Najjar syndrome type 1, it is characterized by the impaired activity of the enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase. As a result, addition of 2 units of UDP glucuronic acid in the conversion of unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin is affected. Then we have krigler najjar syndrome type 2, which is characterized by the defective addition of second unit of glucuronic acid to UDP, uh, I mean uh, bilirubin monoglucuronide to form bilirubin diglucuronide. To summarize, in krigler najjar syndrome type 1, it is characterized by defective UDP glucuronyl transferase enzyme, which adds 2 units of UDP glucuronic acid to unconjugated bilirubin to form bilirubin diglucuronide. In kligner najjar syndrome type 2, it is characterized by the defective addition of second glucuronic acid to bilirubin monoglucuronide to form bilirubin diglucuronide. Krigler najjar syndrome type 2 is a milder defect and defective UDP glucuronyl transferase activity that, add, that adds up second glucuronyl group to bilirubin monoglucuronide is affected. The second form of hyperbilirubinemia is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia and we have an autosomal recessive disorder called dubin johnson syndrome. So, in dubin johnson syndrome, it is characterized by defective hepatic secretion of conjugated bilirubin into the 
intestine. So, this, this chart de depicts the findings uh, of uh, bi biochemical findings in urine and uh, serum in different types of jaundice. The conjugated bilirubin plasma level is 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 milligram per deciliter and the plasma level of unconjugated bilirubin is 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 milligrams per deciliter. The plasma level of total bilirubin is less than 1 milligram per dl and when it exceeds 1 milligram per dl or deciliter of blood, the condition is known as jaundice. In hemolytic jaundice, in the urine, bilirubin is negative, bile salt is negative and urobilinogen is increased. So, this increased urobilinogen is because of increased degradation of heme and increased production of conjugated bilirubin and increased production of urobilinogen in the intestine. So, as a result, increased amount of urobilinogen is excreted in the urine. In hepatic type of jaundice, we see bilirubin positive for urine, bile salts are also positive and urobilinogen is also positive if the release uh, if there is a uh, minute def uh, effect, uh, defect in the release of conjugated bilirubin into the intestine. Bilirubin and bile salts are positive in urine in hepatic type of jaundice due to regurgitation. In obstructive jaundice or post hepatic type of jaundice in the urine bilirubin is positive bile salts are positive, but urobilinogen is negative. This is because in post hepatic type of jaundice or obstructive jaundice, the conjugated bilirubin is not released into the intestine. As a result, there is no synthesis of urobilinogen in the intestine. In the serum, in hep hemolytic jaundice or prehepatic type of jaundice, the levels of AST and ALT will be normal. The level of AL uh, alkaline phosphatase is also normal. But hemolytic jaundice is characterized by increased levels of unconjugated fraction of bilirubin in the plasma, whereas the level of normal uh, conjugated bilirubin will be normal in hemolytic type of jaundice. In hepatic type of jaundice, because of the damage caused to the hepatic cells or liver cells, the levels of aspartate transaminase and alanine transaminase is markedly elevated. The level of ALP is also elevated and in the bloodstream, we will see increased levels of unconjugated bilirubin if the defect lies with the first two phases. The first phase is uptake of bilirubin and the second phase is conjugation of bilirubin. If the defect lies with the third phase of bilirubin uh, metabolism that is release of conjugated bilirubin into the intestine, then in the uh, plasma, we will see elevated levels of conjugated fraction of bilirubin. In obstructive jaundice, the levels of AST and ALT are normal, but the levels of alkaline phosphatase is markedly increased because of the damage caused to the membrane bound alkaline phosphatase enzyme. The level of unconjugated bilirubin is normal in post hepatic type of jaundice or obstructive jaundice, but the level of conjugated fraction of bilirubin is markedly increased in obstructive jaundice or post hepatic type of jaundice. The conjugated bilirubin level increases in the plasma because of regurgitation since the conjugated bilirubin cannot enter or cannot be released into the uh, intestine from the liver. So, as a result, the conjugated bilirubin gets regurgitated and it re-enters into the plasma and thereby since it is water soluble, it is excreted in the urine and in the serum, you will see elevated levels of conjugated bilirubin in obstructive type of jaundice.